My name is Nicole, I'm a physical therapist and a mama, and today I want to talk to you about five things that I'm pretty sure we didn't learn in sex ed class. I know most women out there, and this was true for me for a long time, we dread our menstrual cycle. It comes with things like cramps and headaches and heavy flow and all sorts of issues that we just don't want to deal with. But I want to suggest today that maybe it's actually good insight into how our bodies are doing. There are even some people that are claiming that this is our fifth vital sign and that it can tell us so much about how our bodies are functioning and how we're doing overall with our health. So one thing that you may or may not know is that your menstrual cycle may or may not be 28 days long. So if you've ever taken the birth control pill, it's kind of revolved around this 28 day cycle and that's how your pills come and a lot of people when they're tracking ovulation or all that stuff they think of the cycle as 28 days that's actually an average amount and for a lot of women it's shorter or longer either by a couple days or maybe by a lot of days so if you want to track your own menstrual cycle and just be more knowledgeable about how you work personally the first day of your cycle is the first day of your period and the last day of your menstrual cycle is the day before your period starts again. So that kind of gives you an idea of how you want to track it. Another thing that's interesting that you might not know is that a lot of people guess that ovulation is around day 14. And that is based on the idea that your cycle is 28 days. So if your cycle is longer or shorter or even if it is 28 days, your ovulation doesn't necessarily occur on day 14 and there's a lot of other ways to investigate when you ovulate that it's going to be a lot more accurate. So just know if you're not putting any information like basal body temperature or type of mucus or using an ovulation predictor kit and you're using an app that's telling you when you're ovulating, it's making a guess based on that day 14 but it's really not specific to your cycle and there are a lot better ways to find out and make a guess about when you're actually ovulating. And interestingly enough, there's only about a five to seven day window surrounding ovulation where you could actually even become pregnant. So thinking that you could get pregnant on any day of your cycle is actually isn't true. Um, it's based on when you ovulate in like a couple days before and after. So if you are trying to conceive or trying not to conceive, know that there is a window for um, getting pregnant. It's about five to seven days. And outside of that, you cannot become pregnant. The third thing that's interesting about your period that I recently learned is that you can have a period without ovulating. But if you don't have a period, you are not ovulating. So in other words, if you are trying to get pregnant and you're like, you know, I have my period and I'm having sex, what I think is in that window, um, if you're not actually ovulating and releasing that egg, there is no chance of getting pregnant. And you can still have a period even though you're not releasing the egg and ovulating. And then on the flip side of that, if you're not having a period, then for sure you're not ovulating. So now it's possible, like, you know, some women are like, I got pregnant and I never even had my period. Well, that's possible because you ovulated and then had sex and got pregnant before your uterine lining shed. And so that's how you became pregnant. But you definitely would have had a period had you not um, sperm and egg met up. Had that not happened, you would have had a period. So if you're not having a period, you are not ovulating. The fourth thing that I am by no means an expert in, but does exist, and if you are all interested in this, you should definitely do more research on this, is that there are actually ways to track when you're ovulating um, outside of using the ovulation predictor kits, which can be kind of expensive. And honestly, they tell you almost when it's too late. So they tell you exactly when you're ovulating, but the best time to conceive is by having sex a couple days before ovulation actually occurs. So sometimes those predictor kits can almost be misleading and that they give you information when it's almost too late. So using things like the position of your cervix, uh, um, tracking your basal body temperature and your cervical mucus, like the texture of it, can give you a lot of information about 
uh, which part of the cycle that you're in. And there's actually people that are trained in this and can walk you through how to chart all that and keep track so that it gives, if you're trying to conceive or trying not to conceive, you can use that information. Some people think that uh, using condoms or birth control in some form, whether that's oral or the shots or the NuvaRing or whatever they're doing, is the only way to prevent um, conceiving. However, using this tracking cycle is actually really accurate if you're well trained in tracking um, all those signs that I just talked about. So something to check out if you're trying to get away from contraceptives like birth control and condoms. The fifth thing I think is worth mentioning is about contraceptives. So different contraceptives work by different methods. Some block the sperm from ever getting to the egg, like a condom. Some actually make it so you don't ovulate, so there's no egg for the sperm to fertilize. Uh, a lot of birth controls use this method. Or they work by if the sperm and the egg get together, they make sure that it's not viable, that they can't survive. So just knowing that there are different ways that they work can kind of guide you in which one you think is best for you. I do think it's worth mentioning that sometimes when you are putting hormones and you are changing your cycle by either eliminating periods or skipping periods or avoiding ovulation for many years for some girls when we start really young on contraceptives just ask questions and ask like what are the long-term effects of this is there a chance that this could affect when i want to get pregnant for instance like how long do you recommend getting off these contraceptives before i start getting pregnant because the truth is is that a lot of women that take a hormonal based contraceptive it's a it's a longer time to get pregnant than we're expecting. So we're thinking, oh, you get off the pill or you stop doing the shots and then the next month your cycle returns to normal and you get pregnant. And sometimes that's not the case. So if trying to get pregnant is something that you wanna do, ask your provider questions, do some research. I wanna direct you to a couple of women that have done a ton of research and that have some good uh, information out there for you. It just so happens that both of the women that I think are great uh, resources uh, have their own podcasts. And so the first, is, her name is Nicole Jardim, and she uh, has the podcast The Period Party. And if you kind of look at some of the information that she's putting out there, it just gives you things so that you know what your options are, so you know what is coming in and out of your body. And if you are trying to conceive, it might give you some good insight into why you're having trouble or things that you can do to normalize your cycle again. The other podcast uh, and person that I would recommend looking up things about is Lisa Hendrickson Jack, and she runs the Fertility Friday podcast, and she actually wrote a book called The Fifth Vital Sign. Um, which is exactly what I talked about at the beginning about how your menstrual cycle is actually could be considered a fifth vital sign because it gives you so much information. So both of them have done a ton of research on these things. They are really the experts. And so look into them if you're just trying to get more information and you want to know more about what's happening in your body. Comment below about which of those five things was new information to you because I'd love to just take a survey of what the audience knows and what is new information to you. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel if you found this interesting and you want to see new content that's targeted towards women and especially mamas. And they come out each week. And give me a big thumbs up if you liked what you saw or learned something new today. Thanks and see you all next time.